Today we are going to be talking about the bullet physics engine. So what is bullet? So bullet is basically a physics engine inside of Maya that lets you create large scale kinematic uh, simulations, a very large scale amount of destruction, uh, RBD simulation and so on. So we have already seen what we can do with rigid body dynamics. Um, with this active and rigid body, we have played around with end cloth, with end constraint, uh, the legacy constraint and we are going to be moving to bullet physics engine now. Bullet is far superior than the normal native RBD simulation inside of Maya. Bullet is really good for handling large simulation, a lot of geometry uh, and large scale simulation basically. So we are going to be learning how we can use bullet and as we go through with it you will see why it is better than the native RBD simulation of Maya. So let's uh, quickly get into it. The first thing that you should know is bullet is not turned on by default. So you have to turn it on. So for that, you have to go to windows, setting preferences, plugin manager. And uh, if you scroll down here, you will see bullet dot MLL. Make sure it's loaded and hit auto load. And then from here, you can go to bullet menu. And if you want to access this bullet menu, make sure you're in the FX menu. From here, you can see the bullet menu. You can also see the bullet tab here. You can get all the uh, function and everything you want. All right, so let's quickly get into it. And I'm assuming you have a little bit background of rigid body dynamics. If you don't have RBD background, uh, I'll suggest go watch my old RBD videos. Uh, from that, you'll understand. You'll learn the basic of what rigid body dynamic actually means and so on. So we are going to be using that knowledge in this. And if you are a beginner, don't worry about it. We'll still go slow and so on. So I'm going to start off by taking a simple plane. I'm going to scale this up. I'm going to turn off the grid and let's make the subdivision to one and one. We don't need that many. And again, let's take some cube as usual. So I'm going to take a size of this and I'll go to hit space, go to the front camera and let's keep it somewhere around here. And I'm going to zoom in here. Let's create a brick wall. So I'm going to hit Ctrl D, move this somewhere about here, and now hit Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, and so on. All right, so this much is good enough. I'm going to select all of them, zoom in again, Ctrl D, bring this down, and again Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. All right, so there you go. So we have a single layer of our brick. So what I'm going to do is go to the left view, hit forward to see the wireframe, select all of them and zoom in again. And let's hit control D, bring this back, make sure they are not intersecting and shift D, shift D. All right. So there you go. We have a nice thick brick wall. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna, so if we don't have to actually take a plane, we can also take a ground plane, which is kind of inbuilt inside of bullet physics engine. So you can use that as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go to bullet here or from here, or you can also go to bullet and you can access this as well. So I'm gonna select all of these and actually let's take the plane just so we can understand what passive and active is. Let's turn off the grid. So I'm gonna select all of them and hold shift and deselect your plane and go to bullet and select active rigid body. All right. So now here, as you can see in the status bar, it's basically calculating and applying the bullet engine active rigid body to all the cubes here. So if you select any single cube here, which you can see here, we have a lot of cubes. You will see that we have bullet rigid body shape. And one more thing that you have is if you scroll down here, you'll see that you have a solver, which is a bullet solver. So if you play around with the RBD or if you have played around with end cloth, you will see that we usually get a solver, which is a nucleus solver. If you play around with N particle, you also get a nucleus N particles uh, as a solver and then emitter and so on. So for the bullet, we have a solver, which is bullet solver. So this basically controls a lot of things. This is kind of the brain of the whole simulation. Now here, as you can see, since it is a solver, it already has a default gravity turned on, which is minus 9.8, which is the default uh, gravity. Uh, sorry, not the default, which is the gravity of our Earth. So here, as you can see, if I play this, the cues will start to fall down exactly how it's supposed to be. 
So I'm going to go back here and here uh, you'll see that we can use a ground plane if we don't want to use our Maya's own plane. And there you go. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to use my plane as a collider. So I'm going to go to Bullet Solver and I'm going to turn off the ground plane. We get the same ground plane in our nucleus when we are working with uh, RBD or NCloth. So I'm going to select this. Uh, go to bullet passive rigid body and there you go so I'm gonna select this uh, let's play and there you go it acts like a collider and we can see our brick wall falling down and it's really impressive how fast this is playing uh, because if we were doing this with a native RBD simulation it would have been pretty slow all right, so there you go all right so let's go back and uh, select let's select our plane and let's go to the bullet rigid body. So one thing you'll notice that the body type has been set to static uh, and the reason is that, that you get three types of body which you'll also get in something like maybe if you select any of this a brick wall or cubes you will see that you get dynamic rigid body here you get static. So static basically means not moving which is only going to be acting as a static body as a still surface. So this is our plane which is not going to be moving which is not going to be moved it's only going to work as a collider. It's going to stay at that same place. Now then you have the kinematic uh, rigid body and then you have the dynamic rigid body. So what is the difference between both of these? Uh, basically the difference is kinematic where you can apply manual keyframing and you can use that rigid body. And in the dynamic rigid body, you can only work with fields, for example, Right now, if I select my brick, here you'll see that it has been applied a dynamic rigid body because only gravity is acting upon it. That's pulling those cube down. But if I were to animate this brick wall manually, then I have to choose kinematic rigid body. So that's the whole difference between all of these three dynamic bodies, uh, body types. So make sure you understand this very clearly. Uh, static, no moving kinematic, manual keyframe, dynamic only fields. That's it. So yeah, that's it. And then you have a couple of uh, usual options that you get with normal simulation, which is the mass, friction, restitution, damping and so on. Uh, and what is your collider type? By default, it has been set to box. You can use that if you have sphere, you can use that capsule or if you have something of your own custom object, then you can use auto compound. It will calculate on your own. If you have a certain mesh, you can select the mesh and you can input your mesh here. I'm going to use the box since it is perfect for my plane. And then if we play this, uh, we have something like this. So what I can do here is I can select my plane, make this a little higher and uh, just to make this a bit more clear, I'm going to select the last two layers. I'm going to quickly delete this. Select both of these. All right, my plane was also selected. Let me just deselect that, delete. And I'm going to select both of these, deselect your plane and I'm going to center them out. Yeah, there you go. All right, so once this is done, we are going to hit play. All right, so now here you can see we have nice simulation. Uh, one thing I want to change is uh, I'm going to select all of the cubes here, select this, go up and select this. And then you can go here uh, and here you'll see mass. You can increase the mass of this to maybe like something like a hundred and it will have more higher mass, which is that means they are pretty dense now comparison to any other brick. And uh, you can set manual uh, or different mass for every each and every cube, but that's too much work to do. But yeah, it's there if you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select half of the cubes, delete it, uh, select this. Let's bring this up and I'm going to take a simple sphere here and I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to scale this up. All right. So I'm going to select this first sphere. I'm going to apply an active rigid body. I'm going to select this, apply an active rigid body. Uh, but with the sphere one, I'm going to keep the mass of maybe like, uh, let's keep it to default, which is one. And with the sphere two, I'm going to make it something like maybe a 150. And let's go back and hit play. 
All right. So since because here you'll see that we have a collision issue, if I like bring this out, and here as you can see, since this ma this sphere basically had a very small amount of mass, uh, it kind of throws away. And since this had much higher mass, this is acting as a concrete object. It's not moving that easily, but this is like acting like a softball or something like that. And yeah, it bounces off. So here, this is basically the overall difference here. Now here you'll notice that the cube are kind of uh, floating on top of the sphere. The reason is if I go to my sphere two and rigid body shape here, the collider shape has been set to box. I can make it sphere and I can do that as well with the uh, other sphere as well. All right, so there you go and uh, let's play. All right, so now it's acting perfectly. And I'm going to select this. I think that's too low for this sphere. So I'm going to make the mass to maybe about 80. All right. So there you go. So this is how the overall mass and dynamics you can uh, apply on each and every object of your scene to create a kind of a dynamics into your scene. All right. So this was it. This was just a basic idea of what bullet is, how you can create your first basic simulation. We are going to be learning a lot more stuff about the bullet and how the simulation and bullet works. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So have fun with this. Try something using bullet, create something, something fun. Try adding some cubes and spheres and play around with it. And that's it for this one. And I'll see you in the next video.